day, g'day guys. Today I am playing with some supplies that have been gifted to me by Scrapbook Fantasies and I will have their link in the description below and I'm just giving you a quick flick through of their Cats and Dogs collection, I believe which is one of their new ones. They, I will have all the links in the description for them and I'll write everything down that I used. So I had really, I had a lot of fun with this. I do a couple of techniques that I've never really done before and it, well not never, but it's been, it's been a while. It's been, yeah, it's been a real while. So the title there, My Little Man, is a cut file that they sent me. Now it is, you can order all of these on their website. So if you want to give the cut file thing a go and you don't have a machine and you want to know if you're going to actually enjoy doing it before you buy one, this is your company. Jump on and head on over there, check out what they've got. Alicia and the fam, they are amazing. They are so creative. It is fantastic. So these papers I'm using, they actually designed them and, and created them themselves. So these, okay, this vellum is, I had to tear it. I couldn't just use it as a whole piece because it is stunning. Absolutely stunning. It is printed vellum and it's got these gorgeous stars on it and they just blend in so well. It looks like I'm just flicking paper around, doesn't it? I apologize for that. I didn't realize it looked like that on camera. Now I'm tearing the papers. I'm tearing the papers because I absolutely love that torn line. And I was thinking about leaving that one in the center. I was thinking about leaving it the cut edges, but it just looked wrong. So I went in and I tore the edges of that one as well. Just the very edge. Don't waste the paper. You know, it's fantastic stuff. So let's not waste it. Now, this is my Couture Creations um, buffing tool, sanding tool, ripping paper up tool. This is fantastic. So, it's by Couture Creations. It's got three different sizes, uh, grits of sandpaper, is what I'm going to say, connected to it. And it's really good for roughing up your pages and making them look really distressed. So, I was loving this background, but... It looked too perfect. It didn't look as rustic as I wanted it to look. So see how I'm going around the edges? Got a bit too rough on one edge, but that's okay. Um, see how it just roughs it up and it takes a little bit of the color off and it makes it a little bit grungy. I have done that on a few things here and there, but I've never really done it to the entire page like I have on this one. So, yeah, oh, you think I'd give up, wouldn't you? I've got to do it. I've just got to always take it one step too far. So now I really like the background. It's a little bit grunge and it's got apologies for my phone in there. Didn't realize it was in there. Mother-in-law was calling me. So this one is, this is a really simple layout. I've got to tell you, it come together really, really well. Now, because I had grunged up the back a little bit, now the blue papers were looking a bit too perfect. So I ended up going across and grunging them all up, just that tiny little bit, so that they all blended a little bit better. Now, I love that vellum. I just, I wanted to have that vellum in there, in the layers. I just wanted to do it. I don't recommend putting vel vellum down with wet glue, but I put one dot and it doesn't, it was fine. And when you see what I do with it later, you'll realize, ah, don't worry about it. The, the glue is nothing. <laughs> so I wanted to, I've got photos of Gizmo. Okay. Gizmo's my daughter's dog. Absolutely gorgeous chihuahua. Love him to death. And I wanted to come in, I wanted to have the title kind of on one side and his photos on the other. Now, I've pulled out, these are the stencils that you can get from Scrapbook Fantasies as well. This one is called, what is it called? I'm just reading, uh, it's called Lines. And there is a number that goes with it. I will have all that in the description below. 
And I'm using the Montmartre um, texture paste. Mont it's just called, no, it's called light molding paste. So it's a little bit heavier than the light and fluffy one, but it's also a great texture paste. So they do, they do have that in their store. So I figured seeing as I was playing with all their bits and pieces, I would use it as well. Why not? So I've put in some, I've got a, sorry, speaking of two hours, I got one trying to get, break into my craft room. Now I have gone ahead and put on some texture paste. It was at this point that I was starting to think about a metallic, I want, how am I going to bring in some form of metallic onto this page? Because I like having, I really do like having, um, a metallic element on my pages so to be honest Lexi stop it um sorry I have to let my dog in she's driving me insane don't mind my chair come on gee whiz everyone doesn't want to hear you on the video I apologize everybody that's my chihuahua I told you she's you're normally one step behind me and she stayed out of the room. So I decided to come in with some TCW um, Tacky, uh, no, it's called Tacky When Wet is what it's called. And, or Tacky When Dry. Tacky When Dry, it's called. And I decided to come in on top of the texture paste with this. You know what? If I used my, my head, I should have just been able to use just the Tacky When Dry stuff. Okay, but I put the texture paste down first and then I had me a moment. So I then decided that I put that on top so that I could get some foil and bring in a foil element because at the moment I'm really feeling, I'm feeling the foil. I love the gold foil. I love the colors. I love all that sort of stuff. And at the moment I'm loving it. I'm just grabbing some inks here, guys. So I just stood up and my inks are off to my left hand side up the top. They're up the very top of my cupboard. And yeah, so I've got to stand up and grab those. Now this is a foil. This is a Poppy Crafts foil. And all you've got to do is stick it down to that tacky when dry stuff and boom bada bing, you've got your foil on your page. I don't have a heat press. You know the you know the hot foiling? I don't have all that. For me, if I can't do it like that, simple, straight up, it, I don't, it's, it's too hard for me and I'm not going to go and buy all the tools under the sun to be able to create that look. Instead, I would use foil flakes or something like that, but they are very messy. I much prefer using foil like this. Now, I've zoomed you in a little bit because I am coloring up these chippies. These are the chipboard cutouts. There's some little puppy paw prints. There's a couple of little bones that say play. And for the love of me, I was so sure that they sent me a stamp. I'm sure there was a stamp in there with a bone. I found it right at the very end because that's what I was thinking I was going to do second and third generation stamping with that bone on the background. And guess what? I found it after the fact. It's like, no, damn it. But that's all right. I had it sitting in a different bag. I've got all the stuff they sent me in a pizza box, but it's all right. It's okay. I'll save it and I'll use it on another layout. It's fine. So now I am backing these photos on some more of this vellum, which is just gorgeous. I love this vellum. Now with vellum, you can tear it across and it will be straight every time. Going down against the grain, it won't be perfect. But, I mean, you could have used... I was going to use my scissors, but then I thought, no, everything else is torn. I don't want to go down that path because it's going to look odd and it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. So, this is what I'm doing. I'm tearing around the edges and I absolutely love how this is working for me. And... Yeah, so that's going great guns. Now, this little flare button. I don't use flare. Look, I 
I very rarely use a flare button on anything, but this little flare button had a chihuahua on it and I had to use it, I had to use it. It actually has half a dozen dogs and I do zoom in and show it to you at the end, but I've got to tell you, it's just so cute. Little chihuahua, little, we call them chihuahuas. They're so cute. Um, I know some people are scared of chihuahuas because they're like sharks on a leash and they really are. Some of them really are. Gizmo, not on your Nelly. That dog is the most beautiful, kind-hearted dog. He's got to live till he's 25. I'm telling you now because he is just perfect. So I pulled out a couple of stamps because I wanted to add some stamping to the background. Hence, I knew there was a dog bone stamp somewhere, but I couldn't put my hand on it. So I ended up going around with some grid stamps and some extra little bits and pieces and just to add some more mess in the background just it was feeling a bit too neat and tidy for me so then i went ahead and i inked up the word little because in the pack with the cut file they actually sent the inside pieces as well so i could have quite easily um pop those back into it or I could have raised them up. I could have done all sorts of things with them. So it's totally up to you how you do it. But I couldn't find the second L. It's probably on the floor in Gladstone. It's fine. So I just went ahead and traced me a second L and titled, and I did it all up and you can't tell. You can't tell which L is from the cut file and which one's not. So then I decided I needed to go around the edge of my my cut file just to help it stand out a little bit more and I went around I pulled out my Montmartre adult coloring pens and they're dual tip and on one end there's a brush marker and on the other end that there, there's a fine point and I went around with my brush marker similar to how I do it with my eco line but I wanted to go around it with brown not with black subsequently had to use this one it worked a treat I went around always remember if you're going to try this though come in from the back of the letter because that way if you accidentally press too hard and you'll see here when you look on the back of this how I have missed where the pen's going in if you were coming in from the front you'd wreck your cut file so I did stamp with some fossilized amber on the front of this letter on the front of this cut file and the word little I colored with fossilized amber and I went around the outside edges with walnut stain so the walnut stain in this pen they're pretty much the same they're different different mediums one's an oxide ink and one's a pen but you can see there on the e where I got a bit overzealous but when I turn it over look how many times I did it on the back so anyone out there that's under some illusion that I'm amazing and perfect and get it right every time I'm not <laughs> I'm not trust me I muff it up a lot a lot I really do I muff up lots of stuff yesterday's video had a big big mess up I had the I ended up gluing it all on upside down. Whoops. But that's okay. You know, if I don't show you the, the muff ups, then, you know, you're under some illusion that us content creators are magic and we can get everything done perfectly every time the first time. No, wrong -o. Nope, nope, nope. So I'm just coming in. I've raised up the word title and I've raised it up on some craft foam these foam strips are fantastic. I absolutely love them. And that way my title is up a little bit. And this is where I was starting to go, okay, I think I'm done. I think I'm nearly done. And then I felt like, I wonder what it would be like if I got the, glo the glossy accents and I fill in inside the doggy paws. I thought that could look really cute. It's kind of like a wet paw inside so I've colored it with the distress oxide inks I've gone over it with hickory, hickory smoke and then around the edges I've got a little bit of um, walnut stain and then the actual little paw prints I've done in glossy accents 
and it looks really cool and it's dried now it's dry it's inside the little paw print perfectly looks really good give it a crack and I decided to go over my end man with the glossy accents I realized that it's going to activate the oxide ink underneath it because it's a wet medium and that doesn't bother me one little bit it just gives it a little bit more of a pop off the page rather than just sitting flat I think it's about here yeah there you go see there's a stamp there's a dog bone stamp I <laughs> couldn't believe it you wouldn't read about it would you so I found the stamp and it was all too late for the stamp but that's okay I'll use it on another one and these are the if you go onto the scrapbook fantasies website you can actually pick up these sequin mixes they create sequin mixes to go with their collections so if you want to get some little bits and pieces together this is a really good way of getting several different colors all mixed into one and you can either use a shaker pocket you can do what I'm doing here and just put some down they have little teeny tiny butterflies in there there's all sorts of things in this bag they're awesome so shameless plug don't forget to like subscribe leave me a comment all that good stuff it helps my channel out my link to buy me a coffee is in the description if you would like to click on that link by all means um, and there you go this is my layout up close what do you think of it guys do you like it is it something that you would would you think of going down this path I'm not sure there you go look at those pole prints don't they look so cute they're adorable check out that check out that um, Brad no do we call it a Brad what do we call it it's a it's just cute is what it is it's just cute so there you go guys thank you so so much for watching and I will be back with another video tomorrow and have a great day bye for now